When I first came to Tokyo, I didn't want to create this kind of event. I wanted to be a part of someone else's event. But there was really nothing that I was looking for. All drag I saw was um, we had hostess club drag. We had um, super late night, uh, one in the morning dance club drag or super, super secret drag that you need to pay Ichimon N to even get in the door, but nothing community-driven. I wanted to have something that could help elevate uh, the community, the people who just uh, uh, want to start drag for the first time and sort of help celebrate queer culture and uh, just rise up, uh, show people and show voices that don't get very much attention in society. Did you get any like negative vibes or backlash or resistance from starting Ooh. something like this? Not really. Like, there's very little uh, aggressiveness here in Tokyo. Like, people are just very, um, you know, it's Tokyo. You can see a transvestite or a Lolita walk down the street, and you don't really care. So they let me express myself the way anywhere I want. It's just so hard to find. Uh, just build a serious audience. When I first started Closet Ball, it was just myself and Trieste with an audience of five people. But slowly but surely, uh, I got uh, a few close friends, and then they invited their friends, they invited their friends. Now it's grown to something much bigger that I can be proud of. I'm sort of emulating that American Imperial Court style, the kind of show where, you know, a 22-year-old gay man can put on a wig and dress for the first time, and have four minutes on the stage. You don't have to pay a hundred uh, each month in cover. You don't have to uh, be an amazing performer. It's just sort of a place to uh, try out the new things, you know. Is there any uh, guest that you'd like to? If you had your ideal guest? <laughs> ideal like guest performer? Yeah. Probably Bianca Del Rio or Chinks Monsoon or Alaska 5000, just to name a few. But to be honest, I just like my small community of people in, you know, my small local bar with just 40 people in the audience. I would like to grow something bigger, maybe a 200 person audience with uh, blue girl level performers. But for the time being, I'm happy with my small family because it's something that uh, I can be proud I made. <laughs> I mean, if you didn't have closet ball, what, what would you be doing? I would be putting on my uh, iPod and dancing in the rice fields. <laughs> That's what I did. My first, when I first came to Japan, I lived in Kochi in Shikoku. Uh, there are many rice fields there. Very many rice fields. Yeah, very boring. The closest gay person was ten kilometers away, so very much you, the lonely you know guy. That? Grinder. <laughs> So yeah, my Saturday nights, I would just put in my headphones and then I would practice my closet ball routine with a, a night with no one looking. With ex aspirations of coming back to Tokyo and starting? Yeah, basically. Deluding myself until it became real. Would you ever go back to Kochi? My mother is from America. My father is from the UK. That basically means I have a big dick, bad teeth, and habit of taking things that don't belong to me. <sighs> Thank you for the pity laugh. Well, what would you say is like the, the message of Tokyo Closet? The message is one of just uh, acceptance and tolerance. I understand that there's so many different ways to be yourself and so many different ways to, uh, to express yourself. That we can't all be, you know, uh, to see a world where the hero is not always the straight white man saving the day over and over again. That we can have heroes that are gay and lesbian and trans and show the intersections of our identity, not just uh, the same character types and the same tropes and the same stereotypes over and over again. Like, I never want a closet ball to feel like a stereotype. I want to feel like everyone is a unique and complicated person. When it sucks to be you Let me make you feel